this is Dr. Michael Chen. I am a clinical professor at the University Hospitals and a family physician out in Streetsboro, Ohio. Today I'm going to be doing a talk on the various kinds of insulin that we use uh, to treat patients who have type 1, type 2 diabetes. So here's a chart. Here's your blood sugars and here's time. Um, normally um, our if we're fasting, our blood sugars run around the 70 or so place. Um, and this is what kind of the basal level of where our um, sugars are. During the course of the day, when you eat some food that have sugars in it, um, your blood sugars go up um, in your body. Um, and then what happens is your body re releases insulin. Um, and the insulin causes um, the blood sugars to go down um, and get absorbed into the, the muscles um, in the organs. And same same thing happens throughout the day, um, and this is how a normal person, you know, responds to a bolus of sugar being eat, to eaten. And um, how we uh, how diabetes works is your body's not able to produce enough insulin to um, bring your blood sugars down, and so your blood sugars run high. I'm going to use the brand names because honestly, they're all still branded products right now. Um, there's Lantus. And there's Levemir. Both are good products. Both work well. Um, the basal insulins work to keep your blood sugars or provide a basal level of insulin control throughout the day, which is helpful because it 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 uh, kind of replicates what your body does naturally. And oftentimes you can use these insulins um, at the very beginning when someone's um, not controlled with their oral um, diabetic medications, or they can also provide a basal level of control for type 1 diabetics as well. Um, Lantus has more of a kind of a flat line throughout the day, where, whereas Levemir kind of goes up and then kind of down like this. So in terms of a pure basal effect, 24-hour effect, Lantus really does work a little better for that. But clinically speaking, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, what you want to know with um, basils is typically if you want to start it, you can start at a low level. I typically do 10, 10 units or so and then gradually increase it by fasting bl blood sugar. So if the blood sugar is 140 or 150 the next morning, then increase it the next day. Usually by one or two units and it's very hard to hurt yourself with a basal insulin. So it's, that's why we typically go to it first. The old way is using regular insulin. Regular insulin, we don't really use a whole lot anymore, but it is very cheap. Um, and it lasts about four hours uh, or so, whereas the um, the wrapped acting ones that we typically use now are active within two hours or so, which makes it a lot more physiologic. So we use Humalog. Um, and Novalog. And a Pedra, those are the brand, they're all brand name products. Um, you notice the log, usually Humalog is one that we use mostly in UH. Um, and these are given um, at mealtime. Um, and generally, how I titrate these, and these are a little more complicated because these can cause low sugars. Um, these are given before you eat and then. The way I do it is I have people check their blood sugars two hours, check two hours after eating. And the goal is to have your blood sugar less than 180 two hours afterwards. Um, now, if someone's consistently um, above 180, then what you can do is gradually increase them. Generally, what, how it works is 50% of your, of your daily um, insulin um, you should be the basal, like the um, Lantus, Levemir, or whatnot. And then the other 50% should be the, the boluses at the meal times. So if you just happen to do two biggest meals, you can do 50% in 2525. 25. Um, uh, but generally, I start with a lower amount and then gradually increase it. Another form of insulin is uh, NPH insulin. Um, and NPH. Um, was what we used before we had basal insulins, and I forget how much long how long it lasts, but I suspect it's around 12 hours or so. Um, but it's a kind of a gradual rise as opposed to kind of the, the nice basal that we see with Lantus. Where we see NPH mostly these days is in the product 7030, um, which is a generic product, so it's pretty cheap. And this is helpful for people who don't like giving themselves shots. 
with a true basal um, insulin, you're giving yourself generally up to like four shots a day, um, which can be annoying for some people. So 70-30 works well for people who do not, um, who don't don't mind eating the same schedule every single day, like um, having breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a bed- bedtime snack. And with uh, 70-30, um, you have the initial um, 70, which is the regular insulin, which comes up first. And then at the same time, you have the 30, which is the NPH, and it peaks later on. So this is breakfast, and this is lunch. And then at dinner time, um, you would um, you would do an, another bolus. So here, the 70, and then and so this is dinner, and this is bedtime snack. Um, and if you don't, if you skip one of these meals, um, the second meals like lunch and bedtime snack then you, the 30 is going to be peaking at that point in time, and that can cause your blood sugars to go low, which is why you, you see sometimes people having low blood sugars. So this is really only for people who um, don't, who are going to be very regular with how they eat. There's other things like um, U500, which is less commonly seen, but you will see it occasionally. And pretty much what U500 is, it's like regular insulin, but it's much more concentrated. So one unit of uh, U500 equals five of regular um, and this is helpful for a lot of people who just take huge volumes, like 100 units at a time. Um, and this helps it to get more in the skin and, and uh, be more effective. Again, we don't use it that often, but occasionally we do. And I think that's a, it's a pretty uh, kind of brief overview of the various kinds of insulins. Really the ones to get to be familiar with are the basal bolus ones. Um, and sometimes uh, we use regular in 7030 as well.